Whenever a user accesses your page, that user will be submitting an HTTP request. Along with that request, you will be able to find additional information. For example, the IP address of the user that submitted that request, special headers, etc. Flask has a special mechanism that will let us access that information in a simple way. The way to do that, and you can check the O7 request info module, is by importing the request object from the Flask module. In this case, I'm importing the Flask request and I'm checking some information. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you a particular template that will render the entire information of my request. So for example, it will tell Flask that I am using a Mozilla 05 browser in a Mac uh, it, will, it will specify the particular host that I was trying to access, the data types that it accessed, the content types that it accessed, text, HTML, etc. There are different types of information that the Flask request will give you. We can access this particular request data either in the template, as I am doing right here, I'm just doing request dot and the particular information that I want to get, or you can access it inside of your code with the request object imported. I am showing you two examples here, first in the template and also if you check closely, I am using the remote, the remote address provided by the request to try to get or guess the location of the current user uh, making that particular request. This is not working and you can see here the location is not shown because the Cloud9 workspace is kind of shadowing my original request even though it's created right here. If I can change this, if I can instead of using the remote, the remote address try to get this particular x forwarded for header, I will be able to guess the particular location. When I try to answer to get my location, this is my current IP, I'm in Argentina, if using this free geo IP service, I can get the particular location of this IP address. I'm going to just go ahead and instead of using the remote address, I will change this to use the header provided by the request. If you pay attention at the template that we're using, we are iterating through all the headers in our request and we are printing the value. From here, we can see that Flask is giving us in the headers uh, attribute of the request object a dictionary with the key, but it's the name and the value of that, of that particular header. So I could easily use this also in my Python code. So I'm just going to get the header and instead of using the request.remote address, I will use request.headers and the value that I want to get is the x forwarder forwarded for value it's header so i will save this and i'm going to refresh this page and we are going to see the location that i'm currently sitting in so we have just used the data provided by flask about the request of the user in this case it's myself we encourage you to read the documentation of Flask to see all the parameters that you can access from the request made by the user. Important to note here is that the request information is sent by the user, so a user could just mock or fake the data that it's sending, all right? The user could send a different IP address or a different user agent. It's just controlled by the user, so we can just trust that data. So be careful of what you're doing with that particular data. Um, we have seen a, another important feature of the Flask framework. In this case, it's making really simple for us to access the request data. It's parsing the entire request and it's just giving us the access to a particular object with all the data. This is one of the beauties of this particular framework. We're getting closer to more advanced and useful applications, so let's keep working. <music>